Very, very few existing electrical engineers have ever even heard of the memristor, mm -hmm. let alone been taught about its circuit properties. So the whole idea of a crossbar is a large array of wires between each pair of wires we wanted to switch. And all of the switches, for instance, are open at first. You've got something which essentially has no information in it at all. But if you start closing some of those switches, you can program this thing up to have an amazing amount of information. We wanted to be able to open and close any particular switch in this array. If we want to address a different switch, what we would do is we would then come over here and put a voltage across these two wires. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be able to put something at the junctions between these wires which would have an on to off ratio that was very large. You know, you might think of this switch as maybe even a little ball or a little cube which is two, two to three nanometers on a side. Okay. okay. We knew we wanted a switch but we had no idea that a switch was, was actually a fundamental uh, circuit element. You know, we didn't, we, we didn't understand at that point in time that, that, this was, this, that this was going to be as fundamental as a capacitor or an inductor or even a resistor. So this is the idea. Uh, so here, here are the wires. So there's a top wire. Uh, there's a bottom wire. How could we make a switch that's only uh, a few nanometers on a side but is still going to change its resistance by at least a factor of a thousand. All we have to be able to do is, is change some dimension in a three nanometer material by three tenths of a nanometer and we'll have a factor of a thousand change in the resistance of the system. Well, what could we actually make this thing out of? We didn't know how to engineer the device. Nothing we could do and no model that we could come up with was working. Greg Snyder, who was one of the people who designed and built uh, the Teramac machine, uh, and he was in my research group at the time, essentially brought to my attention a paper or the paper, the original paper by Leon Chua, the Mercer paper. And so what Greg said was, you know, I don't know what you guys are actually building, but this is what we need. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a layer of pure platinum. We're going to deposit titanium dioxide on top of that. And then we're going to make a layer of, titan of, of oxygen deficient titanium dioxide. Then we're going to put a, a, an electrode on top of that. And that's going to be a great device. So here we had this structure which was roughly half titanium dioxide which was oxygen deficient. That is actually a very good conductor. It's almost metallic. So you can have what, what looks like a metal insulator transition if you can uh, essentially remove oxygen atoms from titanium dioxide. It turns out that the vacancies in titanium dioxide are positively charged. There is a dividing line, if you will, between these two. The oxygen deficient titanium dioxide is on top. There are positively charged oxygen vacancies. So the idea is that a positive voltage here pushes vacancies down into this TiO2, like this. The thickness of this is increasing and the thickness of this is decreasing. And so now, after some point in time, instead of the thickness of the TiO2 being this thick, it's only that thick. Right. When, we, when we put a negative voltage, we can pull them back out. You know, when you write down an equation for resistance or capacitance or inductance, you need two things. You need material properties, and you need a geometry. So this is the, the simple little equivalent circuit model that I came up with. So here I have two resistors in series. These are both uh, variable resistors. There is a uh, slide here that, that shorts out these two, if you will. And as, as I put a voltage on this, this thing will be either move down or move up. So this is RTIO2 minus X, and this resistor here is the resistance of TiO2. So a positive voltage 
moves it down, a negative voltage moves it up. The resistance of, of the whole thing is always, is always controlled by how much TiO2 is left. This is the physical picture. I'm just sliding the, the, the vacancies up and down, or I'm essentially uh, going back and forth between these two resistances. This is a memristor. Uh, and, and after 13 years, we still think that the crossbar is, is the fundamental structure for the future of electronics. Well, now we know that our switches have a name. The name is memristor. A hybrid integrated circuit involving both memristors and transistors should, in principle, be much more efficient than one using transistors alone. It should literally be, be possible to reach into a particularly integrated circuit, rip out 10 transistors, and replace them with one memristor.